What is up my viewers, Spang here, bringing you a World of Tanks gameplay commentary. This is going to be a viewer submitted replay, and it is going to be a standard battle, uh, battle on Corellia. As you can tell, it is a submission from Bondar007, as many of these 9.9 .9 replays will be. He was submitting very actively during this time frame, and he was actually, he is actually very sub, uh, active in his submissions for 9.13 as well. So... You're probably going to see a lot more of this guy on my channel. And he is driving a 704, a TD, something which I hope will probably be a little slower paced. As you can possibly tell, I'm a little tired right now. It's been a long, hard day. And maybe it will be good. We'll see. I might actually slow down my commentary a little bit and not be talking a million miles a second. But no promises. So one piece of information he did share with me was the fact that this vehicle he's only played a few matches in it at the time of this replay and he is not fully upgraded he is lacking among maybe one or two other things the tracks which means he does not have the weight capacity to put on a rammer which translates into a longer reload time by about two seconds so definitely going to have that handicap but he does have the bl10 the top gun for this vehicle which you can unlock and most people do at the isu 152 and it is a must-have because i mean it gives you that high 750 average damage with great penetration which i hear is possibly getting nerfed uh sometime in the near future it's 286 at the point in time uh the, when this replay is recorded but the Object 140, a Conqueror, which I don't disagree with the Conqueror's decision here, actually, to go to a field of the map, an area on the map where you would expect more medium and light tanks, where a Conqueror can excel. Now, that E-75, I'm not so sure I agree with. The, wow, the tank spread for this team, kind of odd. For both teams, somewhat odd. You have some heavy tanks here up in the north along with the standard ISA E50M T49 in the center, but then you have a lot of uh, Bondar's team just chilling in the center. Not a lot went south. He is platooned up with two other members worth noting here. He is platooned up uh, with people who are actually in his clan, a FB1A3 driven by Flash Barts and Roulette. I, I don't know if that's how you actually say his name. I know it's not spelled like Roulette, like the gambling game. But I'm, I'm just going to call him that, or her that, whoever that may be, the bat player. Uh, driving a 4502 b a very powerful vehicle. Bondar being a little bit out in the open, trying to get shots on what I assume would be that 1390 in mid and support his bat chat, but I don't think he's really going to get anything going for him there. And it really is just an odd distribution of tanks per both teams, like position-wise on the map. One thing worth noting, which, I mean, Bondar's team is up already by three tanks, so the difference is even more significant now, is the fact that Bondar's team at the beginning of this match did have a tier 10 advantage. They had two additional tier 10 vehicles. The enemy team is very hit point heavy with an E100, a mouse, two E75s, and a Conqueror. I mean, it's just got a lot of hit points, definitely, but I don't think that really helps out and makes up for the two tier 10 advantage, especially when you consider You've got, what is that, two Yogzilla is a 183 and a T110E4, four very capable tier 10 TDs, uh, two of which I own. So I can speak from experience, say the Yogzilla is very solid, a little tricky to play at times due to its lack of mobility and limited uh, kind of ability to really get to where it needs to go. The E4, very functional, very versatile, very... It, flexible plays a lot like a heavy but can also play like a TD and it allows you to really adapt to situations as they come and boy are those things fierce when you have three of them rolling in a platoon speaking from experience of course and the 183 is a vehicle I am on my way working towards but will probably be a long time before I get it especially since I'm not really playing World of Tanks much these days and more just spending a lot of time commentating the matches instead when I have free time. But maybe one day, maybe one day. Right now the tank gap growing ever so slightly more with four kills to none and that 1390 probably gonna get shot and he will for a low roll of 631. The T49, ooh, 
and right now those unupgraded tracks really hurting him here in this soft terrain this marshland just that terrain resistance so high and causing him to not really be able to maneuver at all get any sort of turning speed whatsoever uh, traverse speed is the actual specification is called mm, excuse me and STI now recognizing that there is a lot of Bondar's team in mid kind of turning to face it that IS8 looked like he did get hit for a low roll I didn't catch the exact damage I saw it was 700 something but it looked like it was below 750 when I caught it probably was so a little bit of bad RNG for Bondar at this point in time he is working his best but I do have to criticize his choice of where to go as the 704 he is making do. He thought he went to a flank where he was needed. The So, friendly Yogzilla, not any ally of Bondar's, well, any friend of Bondar's, but an ally by circumstance through ma uh, Matchmaker, sitting on the base. Not that his help is required, clearly, because, I mean, Bondar's team more than has this handled at this point in time, especially with a 4502B and his armor pushing and a 183 backing it up. That is a very powerful combo. This T49, Bondar has got to be careful, and he is in a pretty good spot with his side to a rock. He can't be circled so easily by the T49, who has taken notice of him and is just trying to stay alive. He is a potential one-shot for sure, depending on how well RNG gives a damage roll. Uh, but right now, five to two, very solid. Bondar trying not to get caught out in the open, hiding himself from that IS-8 while facing the T-49, possibly exposing himself to the IS-8 here. But he will get shot by the T-49, who he will then kill and take his revenge. But man, that was a heavy hit there. Was that without the mods? I don't know for sure if that was heat. It didn't have the typical sizzle that you would expect from a heat round. So, But at the same time, I have a hard time believing that was a standard pen, uh, penetration with HE because he did close to his average damage there. Uh, over 700 hit points done with that hit from the T49. So it's hard to say for sure without mods what exactly he shot him with. I would gamble heat, but like I said, typically when you get hit and penetrated by a heat round, you hear a distinctive sizzle and that was not present. So it's still, I know it's a 704, it doesn't have the greatest of armor, but I would still expect a high explosive shell shot at your front to not go through your tank's armor and do near full damage. I mean, it, it can pretty much, I believe the average damage of a 249 shell, high explosive shell, is 900. It might be lower than that, slightly lower. It might be 750. I'm not 100% sure, as I do not own the vehicle, and I don't see it enough. I don't I haven't really looked at enough and seen it replays enough to say for certain. But the 183 going down by the mouse, actually. The mouse slaying that beast. And it's 10 to 4 at this point in time. Bondar really only getting a few shots off for damage so far in this match, which is honestly all you need in a 704 to carry your own weight. He does have a kill, which is that T49. Gets a good solid hit into that E50M, who is then turning to address him. He will take the full damage from the shot, despite trying to angle his armor and ricochet a shell. Well maneuvered in that regard, but it proved to be uh, ineffective. 520 average damage, not average damage, but kill shot damage, you know what I mean. Getting him kill number two. And we shall see what else Bondar can get here. The mouse is just a nice big sitting target out in the open. He will fire a shot, but unfortunately it's right as the mouse backs up. And he did fire at the turret, which was then maneuvered away from it. Now, at the same time, the 704, not exactly the most accurate of tank destroyers, which is a little ironic considering the 268 is one of the most accurate tank destroyers. So, kind of an odd dichotomy there. It kind of definitely a contrast going on but D does get a solid hit for 800 something damage on the mouse finally a very good high roll is given to him and he may get the kill shot here the mouse is just sitting right there and bam kill number three there we go the STI out in the open E100 and I7 are on the southern flank who look like they might have an easy time killing a 1390 and another vehicle who got a, possibly a little bit too eager running towards them i can't tell what that other vehicle is but it does hold on it's coming into view uh okay so it is the bat chat 
So French tanks kind of running into some heavier armor. Now Bondar does take a shot at the E100, unfortunately missing the E4 charging forward. And Bondar continuing to just sit here and try and get whatever vantage point he may be able to achieve. Now, this is understandable considering his low hit points. Ooh, another solid high roll at 828. And I was going to say, oh, the mouse saying, congratulating, uh, you, you know, roulette here. Bondar's platoon mate saying, well played, nice game. And the E100 possibly going to get shot. Bondar taking a risk with that E4 and a good chunk of his aiming circle. Now, he did aim a little bit more to the right to try and negate his chance of hitting the E4, but it is very possible he could have accidentally shot his ally there. Uh, he took a risk. But the E100 looking like he is more or less dead at this point in time. And there he finally goes to the Auxilla, who finally has moved up and joined the rest of his team. But as I was saying, the 704, given its less than reliable armor, it does have troll armor at times, it will bounce unexpectedly. And some suspect there is a giant electromagnet in the turret, but we're going to go to posting stats because we have no control. And here we go. Sorry to get interrupted and not finish my thought, but I was just joking around saying, you know, there are certain players who say there are giant electromagnets placed in the gun mantlet of both the 704 and the ISU-152 with the number of shells that get attracted to it and get sucked into the black vortex that is the no damage space armor zone. But, uh, and also to finish my more serious and relevant thought, I was gonna say that it was very uh, well thought out and reasonable for him to sit back as he was because both the I-7 and E-100 could have easily penetrated and killed him had they spotted him, noticed him, and taken a shot at him. So playing the bit more cautious, second line, third line maybe, TD game, certainly not uh, un uncalled for I suppose. Bruiser, Duelist, Spotter, Fire for Effect, unfortunately no medals, he does lament his lack of high caliber, but as we pointed out earlier, there, it was a pretty high hit point vehicle match with the double E75s, the STI, the Conqueror, you got an E100 and a mouse, so it's gonna be a bit harder to get that high caliber. But he does get top damage for his team, right along that Jagdpanzer. Uh, I think this is the one that was sitting on the base, so I guess... I don't know, they both did relatively decent for themselves, but again, as a Jagdpanzer, you really only need to get off three or four shots for damage to get that much damage. But perhaps my criticism of them a bit unwarranted, I just didn't like the fact that the Jagdpanzer was sitting, and by that I mean the Jagdpanzer E100, the Auxilla, because I am aware of the lower tier Jagdpanzer, right? So maybe overly critical of that but i definitely felt like he should have been more in the fight and less sitting back t closer to his base i don't know i just play all my german tds kind of as assault guns so maybe a little uh personal bias there but the enemy team that you e that e50 actually doing a lot of damage e100 doing meh but the mouse also doing pretty well for himself. I'm kind of curious how many, how much damage did he block by armor? Because you always got to look for that on the mouse. And he did block over 6,700. So very well played. E100 did a little bit, not, you know, did a substantial amount, but not as much. And we got the, so we got to look at this. Yeah, look at that. The VK4502, bravo. Blocking more damage by armor than the E100 for sure. But at the same time, we saw that E100 just getting absolutely overwhelmed. Still, very good games, very interesting. It looks like Flash Bart's really not getting much for damage. Possibly firing high explosive with that stat line and that damage. Probably firing high explosive. I would not uh, be surprised. But going to final detailed report, 12 shots fired, 8 for 8 on hits and penetrations. Got a lot of distance uh, of 300 meters or more for that damage. And not a whole lot of distance traveled, but what do you expect? Some damage due to player's assistance there. That is, however, a little bit unexpected. Earning a decent amount of credits and an experience boost on the times five. So pretty well played, good sir. I do have to say that um, it is to be expected. You are still learning the vehicle. And you know what? Just because you play a bit more conservatively than I would with tank destroyers. In fact, I would argue I probably play way too aggressive, but still very well played. But anyway, that's going to be a wrap up for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button. If you want to see more, subscribe. And if you got 
anything you want to share or suggest in relation to my videos or channel comment section and finally if you got a replay you think i should do a commentary on description has instructions on how to submit as well as a whole plethora of other information but until next time this has been spang and clearly well i am just oh so professional mlg Carnival.